Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a book review for you and that is Crier's War by Nina Varela. Now we got this in last month's Alcrate and I read it along with I hope you got I hope you get this message, which was also included in the Alcrate. So we're gonna talk about it. So as always, we always discuss characters, plot, and chemistry slash romance. And then I'm also gonna tack something on at the end regarding my thoughts on sci-fi and stuff so yeah let's get into it so the main character's name that we kind of follow is well there's two it's dual perspectives um we have crier which is the princess um of this sovereign who rules the country and they're uh, Automa is what they call them, but they're basically they're basically androids that look like humans and stuff. And then we're also following this girl named Ayla, who is human, who Cryer um, rescues and gets her job in the palace as her handmaiden, so she can keep her close to her side. It is a enemies to lovers trope story, but I feel more I feel more like it's one-sided enemies to lovers because Ayla fucking hates Cryer. Like she hates Cryer, she wants to kill Cryer, she wants Cryer dead. But Cryer doesn't really hate Ayla. She's more of like fascinated by humans and our mannerisms and stuff. So I feel like it's more of a one-sided type enemies to lovers trope, but it's not like I well I enjoyed it. Because I enjoy that trope when done correctly. Um, I'm not going to talk much about the side characters. There's only about a couple that I'm like really interested in. And that's Kinnock, uh, which is Cryer's fiance that she has, that she's going to marry. He's also an Atoma and he wants to like rule the world basically. Like he's very clearly evil. And then we have Benji, which is Ayla's best friend, who at the end of the novel is currently injured so I'm curious to see where their stories go um plot like I said it's an enemies to lovers um trope in that it's basically the robo apocalypse happened in that humans created robots and kind of like subjugated them and treated them as pets and servants and stuff and then the robots got fed up with that and they overthrew the humans, and now the humans are the ones that are the ser the servants and the subjugates. And basically, Ayla is part of this resistance that wants to overthrow the robots, basically, and put humans back on top again. So that's kind of like her whole goal. Cryer is the sovereign's daughter who is going to eventually take the throne, and she's engaged to Kinnock, who is leading another resistance against the humans to put the humans back down. So that's basically the plot. And now we're going to talk about the chemistry. The chemistry between Cryer and Ayla is amazing. It's so well written. I loved it. Um, I wasn't really on the, on the side of them. Like, like a lot of times when I read, um, reluctant love interests. I'm just like, oh my god, would you please just kiss and get it over with? I need you guys to be together because I love you so much. Um, I didn't really get that with Cryer and Ayla. I feel like there's, like, there's one kiss and then, uh, Ayla basically, like, shuts down and is like, no, I'm gon not gonna allow this to happen, but Cryer wants it so badly. So, they're kind of still in the rough patch of their relationship in that, Cryer is in love with Ayla. Ayla is in love with Cryer, but Ayla doesn't want to admit it to herself or anybody around her. So they're currently at a standpoint. And as I briefly mentioned at, in the character section and the plot, um, by the end of the book, Cryer and Ayla are separated. And like by the end of the book, Cryer could either marry Kanak and take him down or she can go after Ayla and put Ayla in danger. So she's kind of like, what do I do? Either way, 
it could end badly. And like by the end, Cryer is ready to go to war, which I am so glad because during this whole book, she is so naive. Like seriously, when I closed the book, I was like, my review could be summed up in one sentence. And that is this. Cryer's a dumb bitch. Like, I I get that she's sheltered and like her father Hesed or he saw it, or however you pronounce his name, has kept her sheltered. And so she's like naive and innocent. And like when she's kissing Ayla, Cryer doesn't know what the hell to do. She's just standing there frozen because she's never kissed anyone before because she's so innocent and everything. So like by the end when she was like, didn't know what to do and she was like, no matter what I do, my actions are gonna start a war. So I'm like, yes, please, yes, please grow. I need some development from you. Cause ah, Cryer's stupid. She is so stupid. And I mean that like in a affectionate way, not that like, oh my God, she's so stupid and dumb. No, it's, she's very naive and innocent and she still has growth, which I'm looking forward to in the sequel. I think it's only a duology because right now on Goodreads, they only have two books listed so I'm hoping it's a duology if it's a trilogy that's fine I'll read it anyway but yeah um this book didn't quite land for me and I think it's because in the past I've had a difficult relationship with sci-fi like I don't like Star Wars I don't like Star Trek but yet I like Doctor Who so I don't know because like I read um, Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston and I loved it and then I read Mirage by Samaya Dowd and I loved it and both of those are technically sci-fi books but I don't know I loved Heart of Iron like I am so looking forward to getting a sequel so I can finish the duology and figure out what happens and I love Mirage and I can't wait for the next book but like with this one, and I hope you get this message. Well, I think I hope you get this message was kind of spoiled by the ending. Spoiled for me by the ending anyway. I'll link my review if you want to go watch that if you haven't already. But this one, I don't know. It puts so much emphasis on the whole their androids angle and made it very clear that like they are different. And I'm like, okay, I get it. They're different. Stop telling me this. Because I feel like if they had, like, if they had only touched on it a bit and the book was only a little bit about that and it was mostly focused on the characters going to love each other, I probably would have loved it more. I just think there was too much emphasis on the sci-fi part and not as much on the romance and chemistry. Um, I love the court intrigue in it because I love court intrigue. But, yeah. So... Regretfully, I only gave it a three star, which is not a bad book in my, like, in my case. In my case, anything, like, two star and below is bad. Three star is, I didn't like it, or I didn't, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. I just liked it, so therefore it falls in the middle. I'm kind of like, I'm really neutral about it. So, yeah, that was my review for Crier's War, and I guess I will talk to you guys later. Bye!